Welcome to Smart Living Training Wireless Programming via Software. Here is what we will cover in this session. The Air 2 transceiver is a two-way radio receiver and transmitter that comes in both a 10 and 50 channel model. It is capable of receiving radio signals from devices and sending confirmation. The system supports multiple transceivers for large radio coverage and transceivers that are addressed by onboard dip switches and have onboard tamper protection and onboard signal LEDs for status. The transceiver is classed as a wireless prox and takes the address of a proximity reader. The 10 channel transceiver supports 10 wireless terminals and up to 30 radio keys. The 50 channel transceiver supports up to 50 terminals and 100 radio keys. This will depend on the control panel's total allowable terminals. The transceiver is addressed using the onboard dip switches. When addressing the transceiver, care must be taken to make sure the transceiver does not conflict with prox readers on the system. Switches 8 to 3 correspond with binary digits. With all switches off and a value of 0, this corresponds with module number 1 on the system. This always means that we need to add 1 to the total number of the dip switches. In the example shown, we have switches 3, 4, 7 and 8 on. This gives us a total value of 51 and then adding one, we get the address of 52. Here we have three address examples. Additional information can be found in the tech notes included with every Smart Living panel or in the installation manual on page 34. Example one has all switches off and is classed as address one. The next example has switches four, five and six on, which equals 28 plus one equals address 29. The last example has switches 3, 6, 7 and 8 on, which equal 39, adding 1 is address 40. When installing and addressing radio transceivers, always start the address of a transceiver from address 2 onwards. To program devices such as PIRs, read switches and smoke detectors, you need to enable wireless terminals at or above the address of the transceiver. You can enable as many wireless terminals as the panel and transceiver will support in total. Radio device codes are stored in the transceiver itself, not in the control panel, and it is possible to install multiple transceivers for large area coverage. To install a transceiver, first set the address on the transceiver and connect to the system's bus. Next, place the system into service mode so the transceiver can be automatically enrolled. Power up the system, first applying AC power and then connecting the battery. Then confirm the receiver is enrolled by going into the keypad's installation programming menu, scrolling down to readers and then selecting choose peripheral. A reader with a W indicates a wireless transceiver. To upload the transceiver details into the software, First, open a solution and select the system layout screen. Next, select receive to upload the connected hardware. Observe that a reader is uploaded at the address of the transceiver. Assign a description to easily identify the transceiver. Next, select wireless transceiver from the system tree and confirm that a transceiver was found. Anytime new devices are enrolled to the transceiver, this tab should be uploaded to the software. Radio keys are enrolled via the system keypad and then uploaded to the software. Radio keys will arm and disarm the system by default. All radio keys are fully programmable and this is on a per key basis. Any changes that are made in the software must be sent to the system to apply. To enroll Radio Key, enter the Installer menu and scroll down to Keys. Select the Enroll option and then choose the transceiver which is the reader with a W next to it. 
Select the radio key to enroll, and then on the radio key, press the bottom two buttons, F3 and F4 together. When enrolling, the keypad displays the key and the reader currently being enrolled, and the transceiver's LED number 3 will be flashing. Once the radio key has been enrolled, the keypad will beep and will progress to the next key automatically. Continue learning in additional keys, and then press the escape key when done. Once all the keys have been enrolled via the keypad, upload the details to the software by selecting Digital Keys under the Users menu in the System tree, Select the Receive button, and the keys will now indicate wireless. To configure a key, open the Digital Keys tree menu and select one of the learned keys. Assign as required a description, select the partitions the key belongs to, set any of the options for the key, and optionally a timer can be applied to enable and disable a key on a schedule. The four function key shortcuts apply to the four radio key buttons. By default, the F1 and F2 buttons are mapped to arming scenarios 1 and 2, which will arm and disarm the system. To program new functions, simply select the new shortcut for the button. This will need to be applied to each radio key. Once any changes have been programmed, be sure to send the changes to the system to apply. Wireless terminals are virtual terminals that need to be enabled to allow PIRs, reads and smoke detectors to be programmed. Attention should be paid when learning wireless devices as wireless data and terminal configurations must be uploaded and downloaded in the correct order to avoid issues. First, ensure the radio transceiver is installed starting from address 2 or above. Once a transceiver is installed and enrolled, perform a receive on the system layout page or wireless transceiver page to upload the transceiver. Select the wireless transceiver page and confirm its address. Select the terminals page and right click on an expander that is at or above the address of the transceiver. Select the wireless option to set the expander as a wireless expander. A wireless symbol will indicate the expander as wireless. The expander is reserved as a wireless expander but is currently greyed out because terminals have not yet been added from the system layout. Open the system layout page and double click the expander module that was used for wireless. The wireless expander is now blue and ready to be configured. Be sure to send the terminals page before enrolling devices. Radio devices can be enrolled using the software. Before learning any radio devices using the software, you must ensure the terminal's configuration has been sent to the system first. If devices are learned via the keypad, the terminal's page must be received before making any programming changes. It is recommended to use either the software or the keypad to learn devices to avoid issues with sending and receiving the configurations. After learning any radio device, you must receive the wireless transceiver settings if you would like to back up your wireless transceiver data. The IR100 motion detector is a 12 by 12 meter motion detector with creep zone detection and can be disabled when the system is disarmed to save battery life. Sensitivity is programmable via the software and the tamper switch is also programmable. The detector operates with a long life lithium battery. On the terminals page, right click on a terminal on the wireless expander to enroll the sensor into. Select the IR100 option. Double click the terminal to open the programming window. Under the wireless programming section, select the type as infrared detector. Click the enroll button to enroll the detector. Once the system is in enroll mode, the transceiver's LED3 will start to flash. Press the enroll button on the device. After about 10 seconds, a message should confirm that the device was enrolled successfully. The device is now learnt and the enrol options are now locked. Adjust the sensitivity of the detector if required between 1 and 4. The FD100 is a photoelectric smoke detector with dust contamination warning, multicoloured status LED, tamper switch which is programmable and a long life lithium battery. 
On the terminals page, right click on a terminal on the wireless expander to enroll the sensor into. Select the IR100 option. Double click the terminal to open the programming window. Under the wireless programming section, select the type as smoke detector. Click the enroll button to enroll the detector. Once the system is in enroll mode, the transceiver's LED3 will start to flash. Press the enroll button on the device. After about 10 seconds, a message should confirm that the device was enrolled successfully. The MC100 is a wireless read switch that has both a long and a short side read sensing and has two programmable input-output terminals. It is a dual-channel device supporting two terminals and it has a programmable tamper switch. Learning and programming of this device depends on how it will be used. To learn as a read switch, on the terminals page, right click on a terminal on the wireless expander to enroll the sensor into. Select the IR100 option. Double click the terminal to open the programming window. Under the wireless programming section, select the type as magnetic contact. Click the enroll button to enroll the device. Once the system is in enroll mode, the transceiver's LED3 will start to flash. Press the enroll button on the device. After about 10 seconds, a message should confirm that the device was enrolled successfully. Once learned, select which read input will be used. To learn one of the read switch's terminals as an input, on the terminals page, right click on a terminal on the wireless expander to enroll the sensor into. Select the IR100 option. Double click the terminal to open the programming window. Under the wireless programming section, select the type as terminal 1 or 2. Click the enroll button to enroll the device. Once the system is in enroll mode, the transceiver's LED3 will start to flash. Press the enroll button on the device. After about 10 seconds, a message should confirm that the device was enrolled successfully. The terminal will now support an external input and can also be configured for an end-of-line resistor plus tamper. To program the second input, repeat this process on a new wireless terminal and select the Terminal 2 Magnetic Contact option and enrol the sensor again. To program the MC100's terminal as an output, right click on a wireless terminal and then select the MC100 output option. Double click the terminal to open the configuration window. Select the required terminal 1 or 2 from the wireless programming section. Click the enroll button to enroll the device. The LED3 on the transceiver will start to flash. Insert the battery and press the enroll button. A confirmation message should be received after about 10 seconds. Select the broadcast RF option for any wireless output to ensure that it triggers immediately. Wireless outputs do not provide power. They can be used to switch power from an external power source up to 150 milliamps. As is pictured here, the negative of the power supply feeds into the common of the terminals and is switched through to the load. The MC200 is a wireless read switch vibration sensor and tilt sensor. It is small sized, is a double zone device and has a programmable tamper switch. To program this device, on a wireless terminal, right-click and select the MC200 option. Double-click on the terminal to open the configuration window. Under the wireless configurations, select the MC200 option and then select the Enroll button. The transceiver's LED3 will start to flash Insert the battery into the device and press the enroll button for one second. You should receive a learn confirmation after about 10 seconds. 
The MC200 is a dual zone device with the read switch on zone 1 and the vibration and tilt sensor on zone 2. The vibration and tilt adjustments can be adjusted using the inclination, vibration time and vibration sensitivity. The inclination setting adjusts how far the sensor can move or tilt in 6 degree increments. This can be useful for fold out windows. The vibration and inclination time is the time to detect vibration and tilt activity, which is set in either seconds or milliseconds. Vibration sensitivity is how sensitive the vibration sensor will react. A sensitivity of 1 is disabled, while a sensitivity of 63 is extremely sensitive. The recommended range is between 40 and 55. If it is desired not to use either the read switch input or the vibration and tilt sensor, simply deselect it from all partitions. Before testing or programming wireless devices, ensure that you upload the wireless transceiver data from the system. Select the wireless transceiver and then choose to upload. Confirm that all the learned devices are listed. The serial numbers can be used to identify sensors. Simply look for the serial number sticker on the device. This will now back up the wireless data to the software when saved. It is important to ensure that all the wireless devices are listed before doing a send all. This will avoid overriding any of the wireless data. To test a wireless device, open the terminals page, double click on a wireless terminal to test, and then select the real time button. The bar graph will show real time zone status as the zone is triggered. Signal strength is indicated by a wireless signal strength meter and the sensor's battery level can also be observed. The RF analysis button will open an analysis window to monitor signal quality. The RF analysis monitor will show a signal level at the top and a noise level at the bottom. The greater the distance between the two signals means the better the signal quality. This completes this training module.